In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners just like you. Just like you. Now, the way we open the episode is we uh, you know, talk about current events, have a lot of fun. We mention our sponsors. That's the first 44 minutes of this episode. It's the intro portion. After that is when we answer the fitness questions. So let me give you the breakdown of what happened in today's Mind Pump episode. We started by talking about our first jobs. These are the jobs we did when oh, we were 15 memories. years old. Way back in the day, uh, Justin apparently uh, got money like it was 1952. I guess he got jipped or whatever. <laughs> it was a little old-timey. Then we talk about uh, organ meats, the value of organ meats for strength, muscle, and health, and why organ meats are disgusting. They don't taste very good. So one of the things you can do is supplement with organ complex supplements. These are freeze-dried, grass-fed capsules uh, that contain heart, uh, kidney, and liver, um, and the best company that we found that produces this is Paleo Valley. So you can actually go on Paleo Valley's website, use the code MINDPUMP15, get 15% off your first order of organ complex. Here's the website. It's paleovalley.com forward slash mindpump. Again, the code is mindpump and then the number 15. Then Justin talked about live water. This is water that hasn't been cleaned Sounds like a PR. More like dead water. Yeah, sounds like good PR for dirty water. Yeah. Uh, then we talked about The Gap working with Kanye West, uh, LeBron James cool. and his new media company. Uh, we talked about COVID um, and being spread in gyms, or should I say being lack of being spread in gyms. New study shows that gyms are not posing a risk. So open them up already. Gyms are essential. What's wrong with everybody? Then we talked about the new flavor of Magic Spoon cereal. This cereal is high in protein. It's got whey protein in it. It's like a supplement for your muscles, but it tastes like kid's cereal. It's delicious. They have fruit flavored. They have, uh, I think they have uh, birthday cake flavor, blueberry, mm. and new peanut butter, uh, which Adam and Justin are fighting over. Place your bets. Let's see who wins I that, need it. that fight. Uh, but anyway, if you because you're a Mind Pump listener, you get a discount. Here's how you get the Mind Pump discount. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump, use the code Mind Pump, get, uh, get a discount on high protein, no sugar cereal. Then we answer the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person says, how many times a week should you exercise each body part? So there's an argument in the fitness space that some people need to do once a week. Other people say two or three days a week. Adam says 37. What's the right uh, answer? The next question, this person says, what's the difference between low and high reps in terms of results? The third question, what's better, raw or cooked vegetables? So we answer that one. Lots of raw. And then the final question, that was creepy. Um, is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? So we answer that one. Uh, also, um, are hairy. everybody check this out. It's the final hours. If you're one of the lucky listeners that tuned into this podcast right when we dropped it, you have a few hours left for the biggest sale of the year for Mind Pump. All individual workout programs are 40% off. That's huge, 40% off. All of our bundles, this is where we take multiple programs and put them together, are an additional 25% off. That brings the total discount, because they're already discounted about 30% off, over 50% off. It's crazy. Have we lost our minds? I don't know. So many percents off. Take advantage. Again, it's the final hours. Here's what you do. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. If you want the 40% off individual programs, Use the code SUMMER PROGRAM. If you want the discount off of the bundles, which is 25% off, use the code SUMMER BUNDLE. Pause the podcast right now. Go get your program on discount. Come back, listen to us. Uh, you'll love them. And it's teacher time. Oh, shit, Sal. You know it's my favorite time of the week. <laughs> <laughs> we have two winners for Apple Podcasts, one winner for Facebook. Scared the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> The Apple Podcast winners are Fit Trucker Lady and Fluff the Original. Ooh. And for Facebook, we have Ken Osborne. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. So what were you telling me, Sal, about uh, what? 
putting your kids up for adoption, you were considering that <laughs> at, the, at the age yeah. that they are right now. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I, got, I got my boy in here right now recording the, the video. That's he's so like, what? Up. You don't want to discuss he that? He perked up all of a sudden. Put yeah. you on the spot a little bit. Shh. I mean, he's he's old enough. I thought you were going to cut him in on it, right? You thought he, that was part of the deal? That's next week. Next week. Oh, you guys that. haven't discussed that. Right? <laughs> no, I don't think you get very Tax much. strategies. I think once they get into high school, you don't get very much money for them. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. No, I think no. the sweet spot's where mine's at. That's where you have to go like right now no yeah. no yeah that's how dude it's so fun having my kid in here right now recording <laughs> yeah. recording the video for us yeah. you know what i mean that's a good yeah. time the best part about it is it's free yeah yeah you know what i mean it's for a free labor does it cost us <laughs> yeah. any any money at all he's gonna get this super high education and then we're just gonna stick him behind some computer working for us one day that's until he works off his education yeah, is that, that's is that, it that's gonna work yeah. that's a good five dollars an hour <laughs> at yeah. a time do you guys remember last night we were talking about our first jobs oh yeah yeah that yeah. was fun yeah. Oh yeah, that was good. What was your first do- job again, Justin? Uh, well, it, I was Ever? walking little wiener dogs. Mm. That, that was my very first job. I was like, uh, I want to like, say something I was like ten years old. Yeah, wiener, wieners. I'm in. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got paid like fifty cents uh, every time I'd walk them, and then I just collected. I, I ended up getting five hundred bucks in in fifty cent pieces. Oh, actual fifty cent pieces. Yeah. Who has that's those how anymore? often I did it. I this lady, she would go get them from I don't know from the bank. She would just like, you know. Did you it, save them all? Yeah, I saved them all, and then I put them in the bank, and and then I'm sure I spent it. At some oh point. wow, yeah, like an asshole. Wow, <laughs> yeah. I feel like you walked dogs back in 1953. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really old lady, you yeah. know. I was, I was like, I was happy just to walk it for her, but she gave me fifty cent yeah, pieces. Fifty cents and a Werther's original. Yeah, yeah. 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 My first job, aside from working. Uh, with my dad as a kid was uh, I washed dishes and I got paid four dollars. I think it was four dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Yeah, you won on that. Bet. But uh, yeah. yeah, but but he paid ca- he paid us cash. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean. It was yeah. a, it was a Italian restaurant. Oh, so you didn't have taxes out? Well, I guess oh, that's so. Mine, what it means. mine was wor- <laughs> mine was worse then. So I was four fifty with taxes taken out. And oh, you had to man, pay taxes. You're on the yeah. payroll. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it was officially on the payroll. What, what is it? What's the statute of limitations on that, Doug? I think maybe seven years. Okay, so I'm okay. safe. <laughs> yes, you're okay. You're not gonna try and collect their three hundred dollars <laughs> yeah, of taxes. Yeah, yeah dude, dude I, I washed dishes, and um, you know, it's funny. My first job. And I, I just wanted to be, no joke, I wanted to be the best dishwasher in the restaurant. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like super fast. Yeah. Doing a good job. Here's what I want to know. You, have you guys ever worked in restaurant? You did, right, yeah. Justin? Oh, yeah. Why don't they have those dishwashers in your house? Uh, it would make life awesome. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's so fast. It's a minute. And yeah. you clean. You could put a pizza in there. It'll clean the whole. Yeah, thing but up. I imagine those. Where things, are you gonna put it? Those though? things are like twenty thousand dollars or more. They are. Huh? Yeah, they're uh, expensive. Yeah, because they have the two doors, and I would slap the dishes on. And I. And you just run these trays through. Yeah, like, you push it in. Yeah, you slam them. Done. Hit the button, and it's. And then it comes out thirty seconds later. I think clean. you're onto something, though. That it's, might be worth a purchase. Why not, dude? Yeah. And literally, and I figured out the because my job was to spray the dishes down before putting them on the racks. Yeah. Pushing them in. You still then when do they jobs come out, like that, right? Huh? Yeah. Hosing then, people down. Then when they come out, I put the dishes away or whatever. That was my yeah. job. But I started to figure out just how dirty I could leave the dishes and they'd mm. get clean. Mm-hmm. And you pretty much didn't have to do anything. <laughs> That's how powerful it was. Yeah. They'd have like a slice of cake on there, throw it in. <laughs> It come out clean. It made you faster. I feel like everybody has to do a restaurant job. I feel like that should be a qualification. I actually agree with that. Yeah, I do. Because or some sort of a people, service job, right? People are you, such assholes to the to these poor people. Man. You, they yeah. are, and you have to learn how to deal with people. You actually have to learn sales skills. Yeah, uh, because it's communication skills. Yeah, and I hundred uh, percent agree. Oh man, there was just so many times I was like, I had to just you know deal with people yelling and 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 you know people coming in with a bad attitude and then you just have to figure out how to kind of turn it around and still make money off of them so i used to use those as like the examples of like i'm gonna try and sell them every single thing on this menu Dude, did i ever tell you guys i don't even know if i told you guys this hmm. i caught one of the chefs cheating on his wife i just remembered what? this uh, yeah so i was washing dishes and next to me on my right was the like the dish rack because this is where i'd put the clean dishes yeah so you couldn't see most of my body, unless you look through like between the counter and the rack, you'd see me. But if, if you were, if you just glanced, you couldn't tell I was there, especially if the dishwasher's on, noise or whatever, you can see anything. So I'm doing my thing, dishwasher's on, and I hear giggling. I'm like, huh? <laughs> so I go around the corner and I look, and there's the, the head pizza guy, I don't know what you call him, <laughs> pizza master, and he's making we out. We toss them, they're awesome. He's making out with one of the waitresses. 
no joke. And I felt so weird about it. And so I started, I coughed. I did one of those like, yeah. you know, when, you're, when someone walks in the bathroom before they try to open the door, you do that. <laughs> Dude, it's a, you it, know? it's one of those kind of industries. It's, it's a fast lifestyle. Like I caught the, uh, the general manager doing blow in the bathroom. Oh my so, gosh. Are yeah. you kidding me? No. And like how old were you at Harry? How old are you in that? Room? I was a kid. Dude, I was 15. I was a freshman in college. So, yeah. So, yeah. well, I was a 15 year old and I saw this dude that I thought was a good guy, met his family and everything. Saw him making out with a waitress. I felt terrible. Yeah, uh, I actually yeah. contemplated writing a letter to them. I told you the story. My first, like the job that I'm talking about, that I got paid four fifty, right? That I started at. Uh, I ended up getting my buddy in high school the job like a year later. So I started there when I was fifteen, fifteen or sixteen. Worked there all the way till I was nineteen, and I got him a job a year later. And a year after he had been there, so we, now I'd been working there two years. He'd been there a year, and it was a small family farm. He was having an affair with the the, the wife. Oh, he wow. was seventeen. She was oh what? 30, she was thirty something. Man, and he was having an affair with her. So here's my and he was a good friend of mine. And I was close to the family. I was like, it's such a such an awful situation to be in as a kid. Like, it's like a good good buddy of mine. And then I was already and I got in the job. And you probably felt like, what do I wow. do? What, yeah, what do I do in that situation? I mean, I, I'm like, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm damn, exactly. That's yeah. pretty much what I did. You know there. what? It's sad to say, but in some of those cases, because I actually, in my situation, I thought, because I knew his wife and kids. And again, I'm a kid, you know, so I'm like, this is terrible. I want to tell his wife. Do I write an anom- anonymous letter? And then I, I don't remember who I told. I think I told, I want to say I told my mom. It might have been my mom. And she said, you're going to say something to the wife. He's going to deny it. And they're going to both hate you because she's not going to believe you. He's going to deny the whole thing. It's it's it, it yeah. won't work out. She's like, you got to be very careful when you do this kind of stuff. Right. You know. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's crazy. So that was your first. What was your first job? Was at the. Well, that wasn't my first. My first job was. Uh, I mean, like officially was mowing lawns, right? So I started, and that was like that a, was your own business. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So we did that first. What Me, was it called again? A and J Lawn Mowing Service. Hmm. And the thought the theory, Adam and who Justin Jason Jason. And the theory behind that was <laughs> you remember back when of course it was, the A's in front. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, for phone book reasons, you know what I'm saying? Jane A's yeah. and yellow pages. That's you know what right. I'm saying? It doesn't really work the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? You remember that? that? That's like why all these companies are like AAA. If like, yeah. for, so oh yeah. So you're first in the yellow pages. Oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you see so many companies that have been around for 20, 30 years. If they've been around for a long time, they all have these like. A something or triple A or double A at the uh, start. It's so they they rank uh, first in the yellow pages. Oh man, that's so, bad. I wonder if that worked for yeah. Because I remember getting picked all the time in class just because my name like from the substitute answers. teacher. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like I wonder about that in search you know terms back in the day when I was doing my my name personal training. If that helped, mm, uh, Justin's in the, the two first name club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Justin, me Andrew. and all the rest of the people in yeah. the south. Dude, I'm gonna tell you guys something right now. I'm just gonna, and this is just you know I'm gonna vent a little bit. Today's the last day I try to work out with you guys. Sorry, we're gonna have to break up with you guys oh, in terms of working out. Oh, you are just a bunch of slackers. I tell you what, <laughs> I knew if I waited for you guys, it wouldn't happen. Dude, you still have, so mad. You still have these childhood insecurities around your no, working out. I you do. You, we're no, gonna, no, it's we're gonna, gonna happen. We'll, we'll get ours in. I don't know yeah. what's going on. It with won't. You. Yeah, I, it won't. Why do you say that? Right why do you say that? I don't know. Of course why. we will. I don't know why. We will. I get mad, dude. You have. You obviously have this. This this he's uh, a control freak. About yeah, his, and you yeah. have your you build your whole day around your workout. Yeah, and if no, it does- I just have to get it out of the way because <laughs> then I feel like I'm waiting around. What's going on, guys? We're waiting around for everything all day today, dude. Yeah, we got yeah. like all these things randomly just you know coming in. Yeah. So this is care. vacation week. It, 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 it's flexibility. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah. seven a.m. I'm out here doing my thing. All right, you, yeah, you should definitely days. do that. And not wait for yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna get me to train before noon while we're up here. That's for sure. No. Not try to do I that know, at all. I know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. dude, um, uh, you know, I, I always love going back and reading about uh, the ways that you know people built muscle and strength in the past, because I think there's so much wisdom. You know, I talk about this on the show all the time. I think there's a lot of hidden in, in, in just forgotten wisdom that you get from those old time lifters. And one thing that always pops up that was just super popular amongst all these guys was the, their consumption of organ meats. Mm-hmm. They all, this was a big deal. In fact, the very first very popular like widespread use of supplements in the muscle building world were desiccated liver tablets. I don't know if I've talked about this before with you yeah, guys, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. They would take, I know Arnold, when he first started, he would take something like 20 or 30 a day. I know Vince Garanda recommended it. And before that, and they would notice gains from it. 
I've gone through stints of eating organ meats myself, and I notice it's just they're extremely nutrient dense. It's the most nutrient de- dense uh, thing. How big were those pills? Weren't they like horse pills? They were big. Basically, what it was, it was typically cow liver, or and they would you know freeze dry it and turn it into tablets, and then they would supplement with. Or your best bet is to buy. Uh, organ meats and cook them and eat them y- yourselves. Have you guys tried that? Have you guys tried eating I've organ never, meats? I've never done it consistently. I, being on it, like I've introduced yeah. it and intermittently had them because I know the value of it, but I've never been good enough to where I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to either one, supplement with it for a consistent period of time or make sure that's in my diet for to really mm-hmm. measure and say like what a game changer i feel like you've probably done that well so best. here's so there was a, i eat hot dogs if that counts yeah well that's <laughs> that's everything okay uh well actually that reminds me of something <laughs> they one there was this the, i can't remember the term that they use it'll come to me but the way that they would take they would supplement with organs they believe that if you ate the organ, it affected the corresponding organ in your body and it would benefit. Mm, For mm-hmm. example, if you wanted to strengthen your heart, mm-hmm. you would eat uh, animal heart, right? And this, is a, this, by the way, this is very fascinating. This is a common belief among all old cultures. Yeah. You go back to like Native Americans, they would say the same thing. Uh, Chinese medicine, they would say this. Even in Europe, they would say this. So if you're... If you had a weak liver, you would eat liver from an animal, or kidney, you would eat kidney from is, an animal. Now, is that how they yeah. all originated? This, no, like, this- like, wait, Why is Rocky Mountain oysters? Where'd that come from? Cow oh, balls, oh, right? Oh, oh, and that too. Help you more uh, virile, right? Right. Yeah. So is that how, it, was that the I'm origin? I'm sure that was yeah, the so, so, uh, idea. I don't know idea. about that specifically, but I know in Chinese medicine, eating you know, bull testicle or whatever is supposed to help with uh, virility or, or libido. So they would always, they do this thing. And you can see the rationale, right? You think, oh, okay, heart for heart, kidney for kidney. Right. But here's the weird thing. This is what's weird about it. I'll use heart, for example. There's a nutrient that your heart uses quite a bit of. In fact, if this particular nutrient uh, is depleted, you see a rise in heart issues. Hmm. So um, it's called CoQ10, coenzyme Q10. It's essential for heart function, and there are certain drugs that lower the production of CoQ10, uh, in particular statin drugs. So statins can cause CoQ10 to go down. Doctors now are recommending people supplement with CoQ10 uh, whenever they're taking a statin to make up for it, right? Mm-hmm. Guess what You know, organ meat contains high levels of CoQ10? Heart. Heart. Yeah. It's fascinating. Uh, if you look at like liver, you see lots of iron, phosphorus, zinc, selenium, of course, the B vitamins, kidneys, uh, you see a lot of the, and so it's very interesting that you see this kind of crossover. So mm-hmm. there's a little bit of truth to what they, what they kind of say. It's really strange, right? Yeah. It's like, it totally makes logical sense that it'd have the building blocks and nutrients like, you know, for that specific organ. But, you know, in terms of it being from another species, I wonder like it's, how much of it translates. It's called glandular therapy. Hmm. Glandular therapy is what it was called. And it's an ancient, uh, way of, of treating the body or whatever. So anyway, uh, bodybuilders and strength athletes have been eating organ meats for a long time. The organ meats are the most uh, prized amongst um, hunter-gatherers. Yeah. When hunter-gatherers kill an animal, that's what they eat first. And again, they're so nutrient-dense. Wasn't it the, was it the heart that was the most revered or the liver? Heart, liver, uh, um, brain, all the all the organs. I'm not sure which one was the most. Yeah, because I remember they would just like, that was like the, the prize that whoever killed would, would have would get that. the first rights yeah, to Or it. if yeah. you're a guest, they would cut that out and give it to you as a, as a gift. But they're so nutrient-dense that you can actually overdo it. So you can eat so much liver. Like if I eat a bunch of cow liver all the time, I would actually run the risk of having too much in nutrients. Mm-hmm. You don't find this with uh, with other foods. The problem with organ meats is, and this is why I ask you guys if you guys ever eat them, they don't taste good Dude. at all. <laughs> They're disgusting. Oh, man, you just kind of like pinch your nose and put it down, man. I, I mean, that's I how mix I, it with like yeah, beef or something. That's right? the move. Yeah, right. you, you put it with ground beef and you cook it up. Still handling. Have you guys handled like liver and whatever? It's like yeah. jelly. Yeah. So like what we'll do is we'll ground it up. So Jessica would do this. She'd buy it, ground it up, and add like an ounce of, you know, organ meat to like a pound of, uh, you know, grass-fed uh, ground beef or whatever, yeah. So that you know, we'd give it to the kids. They'd have no idea or whatever. They wouldn't taste it. He, they know now. You know, uh, but you don't <laughs> taste it, and it's what's full of nutrients and all that stuff. But that's why again, you're so smart, though. Yeah, that's why you're be grateful. That's why you're smart, buddy. Uh, but it, 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 but you know, because organ meats have a very strong flavor. They're hard to find. So what I've done now is I started supplementing with, uh, and I've talked about this. I've, I supplement with it. Uh, Paleo Valley, who we work with, so one of our sponsors for the listeners. 
they're the ones that make the beef sticks that we talk about all the time, the grass-fed beef sticks. Oh, so they good. also have an organ uh, complex. What do you, you think take. about it? You I like, like it? it. You do. I, yeah, it's a combination, and they're all grass-fed. So here's the other part. When you're looking for quality, especially with with organ meats, it's even more important than it is for the muscle because the organ meats tend to filter mm-hmm. things out. So the belief is that you want clean liver, clean kidneys. You don't want an animal that's eating you know, lots of grain, uh, taking lots of antibiotics, that kind of stuff. So you want organ, you want grass-fed, organic, uh, organ meats uh, when you're when you're eating organ meats. But they make capsules. Yeah. So it's an organ complex. It has liver. Yeah, heart, that sounds and a lot kidney. more. Uh, yeah, like something I could I could repeatedly do versus it, it is tar- hard to keep that up in terms of like having organ meats constantly in your dinners and your lunches and whatnot. Well, the first time I experimented with it, it was chicken livers, and chicken livers also high in cholesterol. And I was eating, you know, I'd eat a few of them every other day or something like that. And this is with cholesterol too. When I in- when I increase my organ meat consumption with cholesterol. My strength, it, it's like the most effective natural supplement. Well, kind of along these lines, have you guys heard of, of live water? It's this whole movement. Of course, Silicon Valley's like adopting this like crazy, but uh, like they're starting to sell um, this water that basically is untreated, unfiltered, and from like a spring, <laughs> a mountain spring. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't know if an animal like shit and pissed in it, like, you know, people are swimming in it, you know, they're just like, they're claiming that they're, they're gathering it from a clean source, but that's unfiltered, untreated, and it, they're bottling it in like, it's 25 bucks a gallon, basically. They call it live water? Live water. Yeah. What? That's smart. Yeah. They're trying to, because it's got all the <laughs> natural that, nutrients. Brian and probiotics and things right so it, it's a very it's a very burning man idea that yeah. this guy started someone's like how do we how do we sell this but then we don't you know have to filter it because that's expensive yeah that's hard let's call it live right yeah because there's living things yeah, and, and then sell it for 5x the yeah. price yeah. oh wow oh, giardia that's oh ridiculous. thanks yeah there's a lot of interesting stuff around water have you guys heard of like structured water and yeah, you know, like, oh, yeah. what Paul Check does yeah, yeah. like yeah. if you if you microwave water apparently it makes it not good anymore yeah whatever. there's all kinds of uh, interesting like uh, like spiritual like stuff that that's you know people place on water for sure i don't i don't i don't know if i buy any of that stuff yeah. i think yeah. obviously you don't want to drink distilled water right because that's not good well have you i mean they have seen some of those interesting uh studies where they like they they speak like angry words to the water and yes. it like changes its state somehow. It's really weird. Yes, Adam's looking very confused. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's look it up. So there was this I don't remember his name Japanese scientist and he's known for this. And what he would do is they would take water. This is no joke, and they would either yell at it or have an argument around it or pray over it or say nice things over it. Then they would freeze the water. And then look at it under a microscope. Then the ice like crystals would be totally different. Yeah. So if it's like if it was like angry so, stuff. So is the concept that the water is picking up the vibrations from the from, probably. I, I, mean, I don't know. Probably how, part of it. I don't it. know how much like truth there is I, to this. Yeah. But apparently well, I mean the sound is traveling right into the water and it that the could water have some absorbs it. it. So it's got a right. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think they're freezing it while they're yelling at it. I think they said something to it and then froze it. And yeah. it holds it. Yeah. And then yeah. so, so what it with the with the on the microscope, you you would see like the happy water, whatever you want to call it, would have like these beautiful, you know, crystal, yeah. you know, crystal like formations. flowerly, yeah. And then the ones Crystals. with negative stuff are like all unorganized and weird or whatever. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah dude. I don't know if I, I don't know if Man, I this miss, I missed the TV right now. I need Doug to pull it up so I could see what this looks like. I'm oh, curious. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot his name. Doug, do you know the guy's name? Yeah, Masaru Emoto. Mm. And it, the, the thing is called uh, The Message from the Water. Are you, mm. are you looking at it? Yeah, I am. Does it look like what Sal's saying? Uh, I've seen it before. Let me pull up an image here, and maybe I can turn it around. I like it when see. Doug speaks Japanese. Do you guys like that? Yeah, oh yeah. It's so it nice. turns me on. I, it, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Just a little bit. I don't know. I'm I don't know. glad to. <laughs> do I don't know. It doesn't do that to me, but it's really nice. Well, whatever. Either way. I guess I'm alone here. <laughs> did you, yeah. Hey, did you guys see that uh, Kanye West is doing something with Gap? A collab coming with Gap and Kanye West? I totally. Finally. You yeah. Know, changed directions here, but that just popped in my head that how crazy that is. Really? Yeah. What is Dude, he going to do? It, it kind of makes sense because it wasn't he responsible for making polo shirts cool all of a sudden? Like, I don't know. Is he? I don't know if he is or not. But So it, I'm interested in this too. So Doug, while you're looking, after you're done looking up Angry Water, 
Could you, uh, <laughs> I, the, you know, some of the, some of the uh, like YouTube stars and younger generation of kids, like one of the smart things that they do is they collab with brands like Gap and Target and like that have like tons of traffic. It's not as cool, right? Like so, when I was growing up, like a brand that was carried in Target is not cool. No, it was. I mean, even though it's getting you know seen by the masses and probably sold like crazy, or Marshalls or Ross, these it's like be- a step up from Kmart. Yeah, you're totally the ambassador to cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else is cool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's yeah. Guy. No, I I know what you mean though. It, they weren't they weren't known as being like. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things that killed the brand at Hardy was that it went from being a oh, a, it, be- it went mass production. Yeah, and then they and then they got it into TJ Maxx. Once That's they right. got into TJ Maxx, the shirts were you know buy two for forty dollars. At one point, the shirts were selling for one fifty a shirt, and they'd sell out. They would make them um, very exclusive. There would be mm-hmm. only a certain amount. They once they sold out, and it was like an underground thing that was really expensive and extremely profitable. And then. You know, and in that industry, that's, you know, like selling out, right? You, instead of saying kind of private, underground, then you go to the big monster company like Gap and you do something. So, it's, so you it's think a, this is going to hurt his brand? I, I don't know. No, I don't think it'll hurt. I don't know. I, I, I just, it, it's really interesting. Kanye to seems to be almost invulnerable. Like he says and does stuff that you think would would kill you. Yeah. You know, like uh, what did he do? He released his, his like Christian it's album. like a gospel album. Yeah, almost, a gospel, yeah. which, which. There's, I don't think there's a PR agent in the world that would have said, yeah, you know what would be uh, a good yeah. idea for your business? Yeah. Release a gospel album. Or to come out and support Trump. And support Trump, yeah, right? Yeah, no, he gets away with a lot for I sure. I think he gets away with, with quite a bit. So it'll be interesting to see. That's why saying. I'm really curious because in the past, so what I was going to have you look up. What there's, are you there's the water. Oh, let me look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of neat. You know what that reminds me of, by the way? Snowflakes. Yeah, yeah. No, you know what it reminds me of? Just a throwback to the 90s. The cologne that, that represented the 90s more than anything else. Cool water. Cool water. Cool. I still cool have water? some. I don't remember that. You don't, no. you don't you know don't, cool water? I hated, oh, cool water? I hated cologne, though. So yeah. it, was an it was an aftershave guy. that I had, but I had that forever. I remember Brute. Brute. Oh, brute. That's, that's <laughs> a, I would steal that from my dad. Yeah, it, Brute. Like, I remember burned my face. Yeah, was like, as a kid, I remember getting that for like Christmas. All those like the, the, the stupid little kids. Yeah. 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 Uh, you alternate that with Stetson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually got that, too. <laughs> no, you did. Yes, I did. You got Stetson? I got Stetson and Brute as a kid growing up. I was for sure younger than your son, oh. and I got that at least a, at least a handful of times for Christmas. Oh, really? Yeah. I bought him the the Axe uh, the Axe body spray deodorant or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so you walk into the room, you're like, dude. Oh, you got him on it's that? Like, oh my god, that's so oh. strong. <laughs> that's, <laughs> What's going on here, dude? <laughs> that stuff is way too strong. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> dude, speaking of celebrities, uh, LeBron. Uh, isn't he? You get a hundred million dollars. Raised a hundred million dollars to start his own media company. Now here's the deal. He said in according to this, his media company is going to be unapologetically political. What? The goal of the media company is to shift the culture. That's that's quote what they're saying. Like in what direction? Well, he's uh, LeBron seems to be based on his comments and stuff like that. Pretty left. Pretty. Mm. Far left or whatever, uh-huh. so it's going to be. I would predict. have you not watched the show. You guys never watched the show. Remember, oh. I brought it up when it first hit, and then I reported back that I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. I'm uh-huh. not a fan. I'm not a fan of his Paul. Yeah, I mean, here's a perfect example though of how I absolutely love LeBron James as an athlete, and I watch him t- the way he plays the game. He's one of the, if not the greatest of all time, to play the sport, and I have the utmost respect for him. And then it ends right there. Yeah. And then what, when he when he opens his mouth and he talks about politics, I it just I, I just don't tune in. So is, is it going to be a? Sh- I, I'm confused. Is, is this going to be like a TV show? Is this going to be a podcast? So they already ha- he already has like a show. What's it called? Doug Undisputed or Und- it's Undisputed? I think is what it is. I think I messed it. It's up a last media time. company. I would assume it's going to be shows. You know, multiple shows or whatever. Right, yeah. but this is what I think catapulted it. Was mm. this uh, this show? I think is doing really well. Yeah. So you know what's funny about all this? This is what's interesting, right? Because um, media has already done this. We've already seen the uh, news, I should say, news media. We've already seen this this start to happen where news com- news media companies start to cater to an audience, and it's become less and less. It's become more and more bi- biased, and less and less. You know, like the the classic journalism where it's you're, you're supposed to be unbiased or whatever right. so uh, we're, i think what we're going to start seeing is opposing media groups that are you know driven by an agenda openly mm-hmm. which i i mean is, i guess is totally fine i'm waiting for social media to do that i think i predict we're going to start to see uh competing social media companies come out that are going to compete with twitter and facebook 
because Twitter and Facebook right now are getting a lot of criticism. Yeah, you don't have any options right now. It's pretty slanted in one direction. Yeah, they're getting a lot of criticism right now. In fact, uh, like Facebook, Twitter, well, all the social media companies um, are going to start getting, maybe start to get scrutinized by the government because right now they're free from, uh, they, they fall under the category of like the phone company mm. where if you and me get on the phone, and you say something that is slanderous against someone else, the phone company can't be sued because right. they're just they're a phone just company. the utility, they're the service. Yes, um, but if you did it in a magazine and the editor edits the magazine, they say now that magazine can actually be sued. Right. Well, social media companies re were protected like phone companies, but they're being found to kind of edit their content, which which means that they yeah. they might be right, able to be rightfully so because that is what they're doing is is they're omitting. Uh, you know other other opinions and counter viewpoints because they don't want that on their platform. Yeah, which I which I is think, their private decision. But. I think it's totally fine. But now I think, well, if you're doing that, you're not going to be protected right. the way that you know phone companies were protected before. So I think we may start to see competing social media and, and stuff like that um, as people start to kind of you know want to find something that represents them more but this is just uh I mean is well, it gonna increase polarization? I don't know, but the less less I, I'm less excited about people spawning off and creating more extreme <laughs> like versions of the, the polar ends you know I, I'd I, I would love to see more rational logical conversations I think there, I think there's a market opening for that so mm -hmm. like I, I've shared before the newsletter that I subscribe to the flip side and you know, I that, like that by the yeah. way, it's cool, right? Yeah, I like it. So I, I think there's, I think there's a, a, a place for that for somebody to come in that's down the middle that shares both left and right and and presents a more neutral position on news and journalism. I just, I, I think, think there's a big. Market I just want to know it. the facts. You yeah, know? I don't need all this like extra. And know. the reason why I think there's a big market for it is because emotion. Most, most people are pretty savvy that you know CNN is one way, Fox is the other way. There's no, there's no doubt in that. Like there, like just ten years ago. That was not like a thing. That's not like no one was like throwing, oh, you got your news from CNN or oh, you got your news from Fox, like and then just disregarding it as, yeah. you know, it's, reliable. It's now been now like that this, is. It's been like this for a little while. Um, I would say. Under a decade. Uh, no, more than that, for no. sure. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. Well, I mean, sure. Fox came in with the intention to be the counter to CNN. They right? did. And now, see, here's, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. So what they saw was. That media, under representation on the on the for the right, right media was going left, so it opened up a huge market for a company like Fox to cover what they're not covering or to to show a perspective that a lot of people weren't getting. And now Fox gets they get more they get more viewers and higher ratings than the other ones uh, combined, right? Because they're kind of by themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to start to see that in a lot of markets, social media. I think you're going to start to see that in other forms of media. So it's going to be really interesting to see what this, you know, what this kind of looks like. I'm all for it, but I agree with you. I think I think there's also going to open up a market for people to come out and be like, "Hey, here here's the deal. Here's what the left says, here's what the right says. Here's the the facts, make up your own mind type of deal." I think there's going to be a market for that. Well, yeah, maybe really if do. they do, maybe we'll finally actually vote a different party, right? Maybe we'll finally see the first time that Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that would be kind of what it, the show would be. It would be kind of more of a, a libertarian type of slanted view, or right? Or a green party or another third party. Right, right. right. I, 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 I don't think so. The only time that both parties work together very well uh, is yeah. to exclude a third party. Yep. They get real. They become awesome working together when that happens. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, pretty messed up or whatever. Anyway, I got some good news. News. Oh, there, good. There was a yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, a team of researchers uh, at the University of Oslo invested uh, COVID transmission and uh, tried to see if there was any spikes in COVID that could be attributed attributed to gyms reopening. Okay, mm -hmm. I think this is great research because the belief right now is that gyms are going to be one of the worst places. Yeah, because you're sharing equipment, right, right. you're sweating or whatever. This is going to be, you know, if gyms open up, it's going to be, you know, how they're going to spread, you know, how COVID's going to spread. So some of the last places to open are gyms. In fact, uh, I know uh, in New York, uh, the governor there is getting a lot of heat because he's saying that the gyms are basically closed indefinitely. He's like, until further notice, we're not opening the gyms, which is pissing I mean, everybody Santa off. Santa Clara looks like that right now. Where yeah, we're at. right, right. So the study shows that, and it's a big study, they studied uh, 3,700 members of the public between 18 and 64 
and they did a lot of controls. And what they found was there was no virus transmission or increase in COVID disease that was related to the opening of gym facilities. So they found that opening gyms was not uh, didn't significantly contribute to a spike mm. in now, COVID. Now I would think there was somewhat of a bias with that study because you're you're now you're studying. Okay, if you're somebody who goes back to the gym right now when it's first opening up, you are not the weekend warrior gym user. You are the, I've been dying for these gyms to open. I've probably been following maps anywhere to hold me over till I get in there type of person. Mm -hmm. You're probably a healthier diet, healthier person, and then you're in. So I think that just shows <laughs> the importance of that, of being healthy and the resiliency of an, a strong immune system and more so than it is like gyms are more susceptible or not. I think if you put a bunch of weak immune systems and sick people in that environment, that environment can't be good. Right? I agree 100 percent because what you have with COVID uh, transmissions are com comorbidities that increases symptoms and infection rates, you know, poor health. So you, ha you kind of have a self-selection going on with gyms because mm -hmm. people who show up to gyms tend to care about their health. Uh, tend to be more fit. You're probably not getting a bunch of nursing home people, people who are, and here's the deal, who feels crappy and then decides to go get a workout? So you're probably, you're probably reducing the amount of people that potentially could be spreading, right. which this is all fact, which is why I think gyms should be re reopened. Yeah. I think because, again, they're showing that I, the places where this spreads the most are nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Nursing homes are like the worst and it makes sense yeah. that that would be you know one of the worst places. And I tell you, man, I we need to consider long stream, long term, downstream effects of some of these policies because a lot of times the policies they don't look further than their own nose, and so mm -hmm. they're like, do this, this is better for our health. But yeah, you know, okay, now people are not active; they're shut inside their houses, they can't go anywhere. Look at their mental health. Like we got to count all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, you have to factor in all the preventative methods too. Like to be able to maintain your body's health and immune system strength, you need to be able to move and be active and be outside and do all these things without a restrictive breathing aid, you know, constantly on your face that's just collecting bacteria and keeping it right on your face. Well, what, what we're starting to see is that these these are artificial market pressures from the local governments, and what they're starting to do is they're actually uh, preventing. Uh, corporate gyms and big box gyms from opening because they tend to follow the rules and the small mom and pop facilities who can get away with like just telling their members hey don't worry about it come in nobody say anything or whatever those are kind of still opening and i wonder if it's going to shift the market away from the big box cheap gyms to the more expensive boutique type facilities well we saw what uh, crunch did right crunch moved that way like you mm -hmm. saw we saw the um uh, 24 hour fitness you saw gold you saw gnc all filing bankruptcy all closing down gyms and crunch as far crunch and ufc as far as i know didn't close any mm -hmm. facilities mm -hmm. and they went the opposite route and they increased rates and are just trying to provide a better service it's funny because we did that episode i told my dad i'm like watch out because he had this like sweetheart deal uh, at his place he goes to the spa gym and, uh, you know, I'm like, the only way they're going to be able to keep their lights on is if they raise the rates. Otherwise, you know, you guys are going to come back in maybe a few months. They could keep a flow, but it's n never going to sustain uh, that model. And, and sure enough, like he just got an email. He's so mad about it that they're raising his rates. Like, oh. He's like, I can't, I can't do it. I'm like, you knew this was coming. Yeah. <laughs> like how, how else are they going to be able to keep their lights on? Yeah, I think that this is going to have long term effects on the, on the fitness consumer. I really do. Yeah. I think a lot of people are working out at home and maybe even if their gyms are reopening a lot of people i've got a lot of dms from people who are like you know what i am kind of enjoying working out at home i think i don't yeah. want to go back to the gym type of deal yeah so i now what, do you guys be telling you what to do do you guys think this is going to increase decrease or or keep the same in terms of people's behaviors do you think it's going to increase people's consistency because maybe they're working at home or is it, is it going to affect it? Anyway? I think that we're going to see something similar to what Mark Mastroff said. I think that we're in the middle of this scary, uncertain time. There's still a major division on how people feel about COVID, right? Mm -hmm. You've got a half the country that's like, fuck it, open it up. I'm over it. If I get it, I get it type of attitude. Yeah. Then you have the other half that are still very scared. Yeah. They, they think you're out there killing people. Yeah. And so we're still very divided on this conversation. I think once a vaccine comes out, once there's more information, once this has been going for a while, I do think we're going to see a mm -hmm. surge. Now, 
what it what may change the game forever is this this time frame you know whether that's three months six months nine months a year that we go through this of uncertain times and division amongst the society if that is prolongs to be you know over nine months a year i it's gonna shake the landscape up and not just fitness i mean I, the other day i was having a conversation with my hairstylist and there that whole industry is completely upside totally. down totally because i mean they she th 30 years that she worked in the same place 30 mm -hmm. years she worked in the same place i know that's sad man and that she's decimated gone, and she, that industry yeah she's gone and because you had uh these owners that you know they were they were still trying to collect money from their hairstylist to pay for their stalls but then they can't come in and can't work and so a lot of them were like well this is ridiculous i can't do this i here's my this is my personal opinion um so here's the timeline right we got covid spikes oh they go down because we're not out now everybody go back out predictably you'll see spikes again hopefully we're going to have a vaccine you know maybe by the the beginning or middle of uh, you know of 2021 but here's the deal. The vaccine, they typically takes them about 10 years to put one out. Yeah. They're putting this one out in a year. Yeah. That means a lot of people are going to be afraid to use the vaccine. So I think the only way we're going to get around this is people are just going to have to kind of be okay with this existing and being around. I don't see it disappearing anytime soon. It's just a new kind of way of life. And honestly, right now, what it looks like is... Is the is the fear and anxiety is causing uh, bigger uh, big problems for a lot? I don't want to say bigger, but big problems for a lot of people. So I think it's going to get to the point where people are just going to accept it, take their own you know risks, or be pragmatic with the the way they handle certain things. And it's just I think what's really fascinating. I think you brought it up uh, to talk about is these um, brands that are shutting down store locations, and everyone's going to the direct to consumer model. Microsoft mm -hmm. shut down their physical locations permanently. Permanently, all of them. That's crazy. All wow. of them permanently shut down. Do you That's, know how many total store locations they have? Uh, I don't. They I don't know. I know but it was like four hundred million dollars worth of whatever. It was a big deal. Now I think part of the reason why they did it is they're seeing that they can actually maintain their revenues mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily. So what they're going to do is they're going to have kind of a, a, a smaller uh, approach based off of what I read, where people are going to help you over the phone and maybe. Come to your house if you need to, but yeah, they're permanently. Were those stores down. ever doing good? I always saw I like know. Apple Store, and then I'd see Microsoft Store. There was like two people, yeah, no. and like hundreds. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, how is this place even I still know. in business? Well, I Apple's done such a good job. Of, I mean, you, people don't even consider them a a tech company. They're considered a luxury brand. Yeah. So they they have become a a brand that you you want just like uh, Louis Vuitton is to luggage mm. or clothes. Like it's. It's become a a um, what you call it a like a not a fashion statement but accessory yeah, or, yeah. exact more than it is like tech it's it's badass tech but then it's like it's a you know a well, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to explain when it, people uh, like attach themselves to brands like that mm -hmm. but, like, like part of your identity almost yeah and I, I I see a lot of these companies though like uh, like Microsoft shutting down and everyone's going the direct to consumer route I, and you see brands that we work with right now. Everybody, every one of them that started their business as direct consumer first, they're all exploding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every one of them that had a model that was set for this uh, first is absolutely exploding. We don't have a single brand that we work with that I haven't talked to that isn't having a hard time like fulfilling orders. So mm -hmm. there are there are some positive stories that are happening in 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 the world of business during this time. So even though everybody's freaked out we're not going not as many people going out you don't see as many people on the road and you know, people aren't shopping in person there's still a lot of buying and consuming going on uh at home yeah i think it's just shifting mm -hmm. uh consumer behaviors and the way companies deliver their products but the demands are still there like just because big box gyms might not be open in the way that they used to be it doesn't mean that the demand for working out is going to go down. You're still going to have a demand for it. You're just going to service it differently. Or, you know, just because Microsoft closes its stores doesn't mean that the demand for those products or whatever goes down. It just means they're going to deliver um, them Status differently. symbol. That was the word I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> there that's, it is. Ah, that's what it is. I, hate <laughs> I hate that when I forget something. I, and I can't come up with it. Hey, that. you guys still have yet to have uh, the peanut butter, haven't you? No. Oh, peanut butter magic spoon? Dude, you- Yeah. I, I, did you get- did you No, order I, I, or I haven't got it yet. Bomb. 
bomb, bomb, bomb. They hit it out of the park. So here's the thing: it doesn't. T- so I was I was anticipating like a Captain Crunch type. Of I was gonna say, what, what would you compare it to? Like or like a Reese's Puff? Like a yes, really? Yeah, it has more like a peanut butter Dude, chocolate made, flavor to it. it Justin, just my voice puberty. just went. Out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Like yeah, it. I see you brought that for the kids. Did you? Did, is uh, yeah. Is because, that you who brought that? Yeah, dude. Because okay, like it, we call it vacation cereal. And they get like one, they get to choose one. And normally, like, I, I, the last few times I've been able to like pitch Magic Spoon to them and they've been all about it. Uh, but we were out shopping and so they picked that one out. Now, if I would have had that, I might have been able to do the old switcheroo. Yeah. Well, that's what I want you to do that. So, cause I, well, I totally thought it was going to be Captain Crunch type flavor. Cause mm-hmm. isn't Captain Crunch considered peanut butter or is that not considered no, peanut butter? No, not the, not the regular uh, Captain Crunch. I'm going to go ahead and say that like the roof of my mouth will never be the same because of that cereal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it ter- it ter- destroyed. It fucks, <laughs> yeah. Your, it yeah. fucks your whole face. Yeah. No, this has got like this like chocolatey peanut butter kind of taste to it. It's, it's different. Wow. Now, wow. would it be really good in awesome. chocolate milk? Probably. Oh uh, my god! So there you go, Justin. Yeah, yeah. Sprinkle some cheese on it, and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Came in a it came in a double pack, right? So I think right now, if you order the the peanut butter with them, you get half peanut butter, half the honey nut. But the peanut butter isn't so good that I haven't even dipped into the other one yet. Well, you know, I okay. So here's it. So I can't have dairy uh, or dairy protein. So I'm a little bit like it kind of annoys the shit out of me that I can't have yeah, this cereal. But total I'll, sad story. But I'll tell you what: when you look at other high pro, quote unquote high protein cereals. This is what they'll consider high protein, like seven grams yeah. per like serving, fortified. Six grams. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or or it's like a crappy protein source or whatever. Yeah. You know, um, this has got whey protein in it. Yeah. This is like a supplement. Yeah, you know, but it comes in like amazing cereal form. So yeah. that speaking of companies that are crushing right now, they're exploding. Magic Spoon's crushing. Right oh now. yeah, mm-hmm. no. You know? If when they come out with a flavor like this, watch. I, and I haven't looked today to see if it is, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's already sold out. Like getting blueberry and peanut butter stocked up is like the hardest thing ever yeah. for me. So anytime that it is, I buy like three cases of it. And I gotta look brush. again and see like their their library of of you know different options for flavors because I was pretty certain they had cinnamon i wasn't able to find it again i really liked it i wonder if they like reformulated it because my other favorite cereal was cinnamon toast crunch and oh. if they ever nail that one i am like that was diabetes for in life oh. i never even get to try the birthday cake that they hit they, oh, so that yeah. came and that went too. so I, I don't know what i mean imagine they're doing feelers right and they test all these flavors out and see what the response is yeah and then i know every time they do something they go back and they still continue to reformulate i mean it's a it's a young company right so sometimes they they release something just like the the fruity one by the way mm-hmm. that was something so i had bought so much so fruity and blueberry was originally my favorite so i had bought a ton of that yeah so i had finally gone through all my like fruity ones that i had and i got the new formulation and the new formulation is bomb is for it really? fruity yeah it oh, was yeah. already it was already hella good that's it's, see that's my current favorite so yeah i'll have to try the peanut butter and compare yeah, I like the fruity a lot now. Excellent. First question is from RJ Westerman. How many times a week do you need to exercise each body part? Is once a week okay, or do you need to hit each body part twice or more a week to really see results? All right. Let's, 32 times. Yeah, that's the studies they show yeah, that, 32 yeah, times a week. Exactly. <laughs> Those, yeah. That would suck. You know what's funny? So I'm going to go over what the studies say, and then well, let's go over our personal experience. Because sometimes... Actually, I should say oftentimes the studies don't quite line up mm-hmm. with real life because there's limitations in the studies. In the studies, they typically last 12 weeks or something like that. They're training people for that certain period of time. There's a little bit of self-selection bias for who signs up for the studies. And then you have you know us who've trained regular people for years and years and yeah. years. And We've so we seen get to all see, the patterns. Yeah, and you get to see it over long periods of time. So the studies say this. The studies say one to three days a week. Um, as long as the volume is the same, then you're probably going to see similar results. In other words, if you did 15 sets for biceps uh, one day a week or you spread 15 sets out over three workouts, doesn't make a big difference. Okay, I'm going to disagree with that because in my experience working with people, I would say probably 80%, if not more, of the people I work with do best by hitting their body parts between two to four days a week, right in that right in that range. Most people around three, people with you know who are a little older or less recovery ability too, and people who are more advanced, yeah. about four total volume per week uh, per body part. Anywhere between I'd say you know nine to like maybe twenty one sets per body part for the whole week. For me, my, I respond best when I can hit my body parts three to four days a week. 
even if I did the same volume and I hammered my body parts once a week, it doesn't work the same for me. It just never, it just doesn't. I'm just, it's superior to hit it at least. Yeah, I'm a week. the same. And it's mainly for me, uh, it helps me not overreach. Uh, I used to train specific body parts like, uh, you know, once or even twice a week. And I would always go too far. It was just inevitable. I would like stack all these exercises together and really try and get the most and squeeze the most out of, of the muscle potential for that day. And I would inevitably the next day would be insanely sore, which would then impede on my next workout going, you know, from then on out. So that was always just something I started to notice. I just thought it was like, eventually, you know, you didn't get as sore. And so you would keep hammering, you know, and upping the intensity a bit, uh, with the, with the workouts, uh, you know, with that split type of routine, but I definitely am a big proponent for, uh, you know, the, the total body workouts and then having that split, uh, throughout the, throughout the week and spread out I, I find two two to three for me uh i i feel pretty effective with uh, two uh i think three is ideal and i guess it depends on which body part we're talking about that i find uh, i get better like my legs do better with three times a week mm -hmm. uh but i could do my arms twice a week and feel like i get i get plenty so mm -hmm. i think there's going to be that little individual variance per person now and, do you and, do you find the same thing i found with clients that most of them are two to three four days a week yeah, yeah. And, and and a lot of that is what justin was alluding to and then the other thing is too that when you when you do it more uh often and less volume per workout right so uh, less sets right less sets less reps in a workout and you spread it out over the week, you tend to do the better stuff, mm -hmm. right? So when right. you do a one day and you say, like, let's say I'm going to train legs all in one day, you know, maybe you squat and you leg press or you squat and hack pre uh, hack squat and then leg extensions and maybe some body weight stuff. Or so you end up doing a lot of these other movements. You're too fatigued. Yeah, and you're you're just not getting as a big bang for your buck. I mean, when you're if you squat and you're squatting like you know five by five type sets. And then you move over to leg press, and maybe you get after a leg press. After that, everything else yeah. that you do afterwards, good luck. You're just yeah. not you're you, you're not you're probably running at sixty percent of what you could probably do if you were fresh going into those movements. Yeah. So, I find that's what I find the most valuable is you end up being able to give more towards better movements when you spread it out over two to three times versus all in one workout. Here's okay, so here's my my whole theory on why you still have people in the you know, the training world that say hit your body parts hard once a week and then it doesn't make a big difference even if the volume is, you know, so long as the volume is controlled. Here's the problem with that. Um, when you have the the muscle building, bodybuilding trainer type people, they place all the emphasis on muscle damage and stimulating muscle growth. When you have your athletic trainers, they place all their emphasis on skill and technique. You would never see a basketball coach tell their players, hey, instead of doing one hour, three days a week, why don't we just do three hours on Monday? You would never see that because mm -hmm. athletic trainers understand that technique and skill is better practiced frequently. People who, who are in that muscle building space forget that. All they look at is the muscle. Oh, damage the muscle, it's all the same. It's not. You forget that skill is extremely important when it comes to building muscle also because you get to practice the skill of squatting, deadlifting, pressing more frequently when you do it once a week it's not nearly as effective well that's why when i you're think fresh I, and sharp that's yes. why i think i i for me like legs really makes a big difference because yes. you when you do squatting of all the movements that i do for like arms there's not a lot of skilled movement sure. right so me getting to do squats if i spread it out over three times in a week I might get 15 sets of squats in a week. Yep. I will never do 15 sets of squats in one, in one workout. Oh. Well, in, and I just that's insane. There's just so many compensations that happen when you're like in that mentality of having to hammer that body part and just keep squeezing the most, you know, that you possibly do. And to 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 speak to like the skill and the technique, like you lose that very quickly once you know you you don't you're not rested and and, and you're not fully in good composure. And so uh, you're going to end up developing bad patterns uh, going forward when you're going to you know repeat this exercise and so mm -hmm. from yeah like it, maybe that is more from an athletic perspective but even if you know for your common person that goes into the gym like just performing that same lift like you're, you're just Dude, it's going to downgrade your quality the average person would do so much better if they stopped looking at their workouts as ways to hammer body parts and they started looking them as ways to practice yeah. movements, perfect their. They'll movements. get better results uh, in the short term. They'll get great results in the long term. They'll get superior 
results. It's like it reminded me when I would see people running, and it, I had this epiphany. I'd see people running terribly, and I think, why do people run so bad and go push themselves? Like, oh yeah, because all they're emphasizing is the exhaustion aspect. They're thinking, I got to go out and get tired. Nobody's thinking, I'm going to go le- practice the skill of running. If they practice the skill of running they would do far better long-term. It's the same thing with resistance training. You're far better off splitting up your volume, going to the gym, and practicing the skill of these lifts. You're going to get better gains, uh, especially long-term when you do that. So for most people, hit your body parts about two to three days a week, um, divide up the volume. And again, uh, after training people for years and years and years, it's superior for most people. The people that can be okay with the once-a-week hammering tend to be very advanced, have already gone through years of practicing skills of Advanced exercise. and enhanced. And oftentimes enhanced with anabolic uh, steroids. So next question is from Ander Beth. Can you elaborate on the differing results between low and high rep sets? Oh, yeah. This is a, this was a... Uh, what, say that again? Sorry. Low rep and high rep sets. What's the difference between the results oh, okay. uh, that they'll provide for you? So low repetitions, you're going to train kind of this low gear grinding, summoning of strength, higher rep. It's like more torque. More, Yeah, yeah. the higher rep stuff, you're going to get you know, better pumps. It's going to be a little bit more exhausting, a little bit more cardio. Um, both extremely valuable for the body. And now, this is an observation, okay? So I think everybody should train and, and go in and out of both of them if they want the best results. But when I observe people who avoid one or the other, here's what I notice. So when I see people who only ever train in low reps, Here's what I tend to observe in terms of how they look. And this, there's no science to support this. This is all pure <laughs> observation. They tend to look very hard, solid, granite-like, but they lack the muscle volume. They lack the big round shape, shape that mm-hmm. you see. The high rep people tend to have that shape to their muscles, but they lack the density. It almost looks like it's just full of air. So which one gives you which? I think the low rep stuff gives you that hard, dense look. The higher rep stuff gives you that more of that pump kind of bubbly look. I think you got to do them both. Both gives you the best uh, results. Well, the beauty is that they both send a, a very unique and different signal to the body. So if it doesn't matter which side you, you you're on, most people tend to gravitate towards one or the other. My you know the my guys that love to lift heavy and and mm-hmm. brag about the weights they lift. You know, they tend to find themselves always gravitating to those singles, doubles, triples, or maybe five by five type of training. Mm -hmm. And they spend a majority of their weight training in that rep range. And even if their goal is to build strength and power and muscle, which that serves, that lifting in that rep range serves a lot of that. But because they do that all the time, one of the best things they can do is move to 15 to 20 reps and they'll get a ton of strength yep. and muscle. And so because it's so different to the body, the body, it, it, it feels five reps feels completely different than 15 to 20 reps. And because of that, the body, it's novel. And so the body then changes. And so and if you're same thing is true. If you're a person who's, oh, I want to lean down and I want to be toned and I just want to be firm. I don't want to get big, bulky muscle. But so you gravitate towards. 15 to 20 reps to supersets to low rest periods, you train that way all the time, you still, you switching over to the five by five type of training, five sets, heavy weight, five reps, you will get what you want because it's novel for you also. Mm-hmm. And so the body, and that's what you want is you want your, your training, you want to do it long enough to allow the body to adapt and get good at it so it changes. But then after at a at a certain point, and typically what most of the research looks like is somewhere between that four to eight weeks. So if you've been four to eight weeks in a set a set rep range, the best thing that you could possibly do is to move to the other end of the spectrum yep. and you'll continue to get the results you want. You know, it was a was a cool thing to observe with this was uh, your transformation, Adam, because when we first met, you had lived in the 12, 15 mm-hmm. rep range for a long time as a pro f- competitor. Then we all got together, started mind pump, and then you're you're like, you know what, I'm going to see how strong I can get in the low rep range. And the change in your physique was interesting. It was like uh, like, well, like I had observed in other people, you kind of got this more kind of granite look. There was a picture that you actually posted of yourself, uh, you know, before and after, both lean or whatever. My and it back. Was, yeah, it was yeah. distinct. So after the first decade of training for me, I, I gravitated towards the, you know, more pumping exercises. You know, I did, you know, 10 reps, 12 reps, mm-hmm. 15, superset. I kind of lived in that rep range. 
And I, and something that always kind of bothered me was when I was aired up in the gym, I felt really good. I liked the way I looked. I blood all pumped in there, mm -hmm. and I my body was all filled out, and my muscle bellies, and and I liked the look that my physique had. The minute I'd walk out the door, a half hour, thirty minutes later, I would deflate and come down. And when I was not pumped up. I didn't really look like somebody that was really buff. You you could kind of tell that I had definition, but it, it wasn't as defined or it wasn't as pronounced. When I started lifting really, really heavy, I noticed that even when I'm like falling off for like a week or I haven't been consistent, I haven't been in the gym, you can still see my triceps on me. You can still see my, sh that was, that was total. that didn't happen until I started really lifting heavy. Yeah. And that kind of speaks to the what you speculated about about because there is no science right now to no. support that it makes the muscle look more great. Plus, there's such an individual variance. Yeah. I don't even know how you would study that. Yeah, but I but I can attest to my experience of of not really lifting heavy that much, and I intermittently did it, but never like I did when I when we all got together, and it completely changed the way my physique looks. And uh, and now uh, I tend to gravitate towards the the lower rep range because I noticed that it seems to keep more muscle on my body than mm. doing like the high. Yeah, rep range. I had like the completely opposite experience uh just lifting you know the one to five rep range forever and then anytime i i brought it up to 15 reps or so like even like 10 to 15 reps like i would just um, i would look in the mirror i'm like whoa it, you just get that immediate sort of definition that you haven't had the entire time like i just have this sort of like f everything's just sort of the same yeah. you know like kind of a look forever like you, you just build a certain amount of muscle mass and then you know you, you just sort of sustain that muscle mass but the you know the hypertrophy train really shows it off and gives those lines. Well, maybe that's the and maybe that's the real lesson from this conversation is less than less about oh five rep range builds granite type looking muscle right. low rep range builds like this airy do maybe, it all yeah maybe what the real truth is whatever you're doing that you tend you only only you, need you both. know only yeah. you know what you gravitate towards the most to. The most beneficial thing that you could do totally. is the opposite. Totally. Look, this is why all of our maps programs phase people in uh, all of those different rep ranges, which by the way, they're all, and I want to mention this on the podcast, they're all 40% off right now, individual programs, uh, if you use the code uh, SUMMER PROGRAM. Next question is from Aaron Kirsch 7 What is better, raw or cooked vegetables? What are the benefits or detriments of both? This is so funny. The, the whole <laughs> raw versus cooked uh, debate, I think, is so silly um, because people don't they don't understand the total yeah. context. It's about food. assimilation and what you can digest. Well, it, yeah. it all came from when people started sharing the the research around when you cook the vegetables, you lose some of the nutrients. Yes. Yeah. And so, and when we study them like that, so if you look at something that's been boiled for 15 minutes and you compare it to it in its raw form, the raw form, just looking at it like that, looks like it's more nutrient dense. It's got it's got more nutrient value. Mm -hmm. But then I know where Sal's going to go right now, which is the whole digestive process has to come. But in. at face value, it looks like it's it's you know obviously you've gotten rid of nutrients, so it's, it's a worse option. Yeah, right. it's like okay, look if I you could look at a rock outside and, and analyze it, and it's full of minerals. Does <laughs> that mean you're going to eat the rock yeah. and get all those minerals? No, it'll destroy you. You know, here's the interesting thing about plants. So animals have they've evolved to have their own defense mechanisms. You got to remember that humans are the apex predators uh, on Earth, and we have been for a long time. Animals evolved having sharp teeth, hooves, they can run fast, they can move, they've got good hearing, sight, and smell. Plants don't go anywhere. So how did, what kind of evolution, what, how did they evolve to defend themselves? Well, they evolved with you know, compounds that made them difficult to digest or compounds that made them uh, actually poisonous in many cases. For example, uh, we eat wheat all the time. Humans have been eating wheat for you know, t you know, tens of thousands of years. Uh, especially re relatively recently. But if you were to go outside and grab some wheat and you didn't grind it and mill it and process it and you just ate it, it would shred you. It would totally shred your gut. Uh, potatoes. We've been eating potatoes forever. Potatoes are one of, a staple in, in most modern societies. If you picked a raw potato and ate it, it would destroy your gut. Though we cooked plants as a way of neutralizing a lot of these defense mechanisms. This is how humans were able to consume lots of plants. The way humans consume wheat is we mill the shit out of it. Yeah. Even back in the day, they would grind so wheat like powders, yeah. forever. And then we would cook it, and then we would boil it, and, and that's how we're able to unlock the nutrients 
and eat them. Plants, uh, a lot of plants are this way. Look, you can even do this experiment. Go eat two, a cup or two cups of raw broccoli, see how you feel. Then go eat one or two cups of very well-cooked broccoli and see how you feel. Notice your digestion, notice your bloat, notice how you feel. It makes a huge difference. So cooking vegetables is one of the best ways you can get you know, to be able to consume a lot of vegetables and unlock those nutrients. Yes, you destroy a lot of nutrients in the plants uh, when you cook them, but it doesn't matter. You're not you're, you're neutralizing a lot of these compounds that cause issues. It doesn't matter if you can't assimilate the raw ones anyways. It, and it doesn't matter yeah. if it affects you negatively. Now, the plants that you can eat raw and you don't need to cook are, typically, are fruit. Mm -hmm. Fruit are – here's why. Why can we eat fruit without cooking them? Because plants evolved – creating these fruits so that animals would eat them and so they poop like out the offering. seeds. Yeah. yeah. It's like that's what they wanted. They want yeah. but roots, leaves, especially stems and roots, those are typically very difficult, not impossible to digest. And if you look at animals that survive just on plants, they chew look at cows, right? They chew the shit out of out of grass. And then they, they have two stomachs. It's, it's four. I think four. they have four. four. <laughs> yeah. Then they digest it a little bit. Then they spit it. They put it back in their mouth, chew it some more, bring it back down, and they chew it some more. Bring, and they get gnarly farts. They, they yeah. get gnarly farts. So, no, it, it's silly to to this whole raw versus cooked debate. Um, you're better off cooking uh, your vegetables, especially if you eat a lot of vegetables. And, of course, some of them are fine eating raw. There's, like, lettuce and, and you know, stuff like that. But otherwise... Carrots. Yeah, otherwise you're better off uh, cooking your vegetables. Next question is from Evan Smedley. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? <laughs> <laughs> did you guys ever watch... Uh, did you ever go to SeaWorld when you were a kid? There was this uh, walrus called, like, Schmedley, and no. they, would, they would shoot him, like, pretend shoot him, and then he'd pretend to die, and come, Schmedley's alive! No. Anyways, that brought me back. Oh, what does that have to do <laughs> with... <laughs> yeah, <I was> <laughs> His name's Schmedley! Oh, I was oh. like, what does that question have to do with that? That was oh, so in it love. Just, it just seriously you got almost me. lost me on what we were answering right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, it absolutely... Uh, I, so I think the, the, the research talks about um, three days after recovery from training a muscle that atrophy technically starts to happen right so if you train uh you know legs and you know the next day you feel it a little bit the day, next day after that you still kind of feel a little bit day three you feel like fully recovered um three days after that uh they say that atrophy begins to happen so um within a week's time if you haven't touched a, a muscle group you haven't been training it that atrophy begins to start to set oh in. dude it's even more than like people think that the thing that you lose is the muscle strength and size. You also lose neurological connections to the muscle. You lose function. So if you were to stop walking for a few months and then all of a sudden get up and start to try to walk, not only would you be weak, but you would also find walking, the skill yeah. of walking, you, you would lose like a little bit. You have to. If you stop speaking English um, in you know for five years and then started speaking it again, you would find that your fluency went down. Now, I want to point out, though, and this is something that's really cool for those that are aspiring lifters or maybe you've just been getting going with your first couple of years, is the longer you've been doing it, the the less that happens, right? Like, Or the longer it takes to lose it. Right. Yeah. So, like, right now— And the rebound is faster. Right. It's And that's kind of, and this is what's kind of cool about being someone who's aging, right? Because everyone always talks about getting older, how much harder it mm -hmm. is. But I, I disagree. If you've been somebody who's been lifting for 20 years— there's a lot of things that I feel at an advantage today at almost 40 than what I did when I was 20. Mm -hmm. The amount of work uh, and eating and consistency that I needed to to do in the gym to just barely look like I kind of worked out was unbelievable. And if I fell off for two or three weeks, I looked like the high school kid again mm -hmm. who did, wasn't even training. That was really frustrating. Now, after decades of training consistently – now it's not like that for me. Now I actually the opposite. I feel. I feel like as long as I make sure I touch the get a good lift in mm -hmm. every once in a while, I could kind of sustain this look. If I keep the diet in check and I get some training in, I can keep manage a pretty fit looking physique, which is really cool. It wasn't like that before. So, yeah, atrophy does set set in, and we do if we don't use it, we do lose it. But like to Sal's point about it's more than just muscle uh, atrophy. There's also a neurological disconnect or that you start to lose, right? Where if you've really solidified those pathways for so many years, 
I think that's what helps you is that it helps sustain that muscle. It's, well, this is also what you really have to consider when uh, you start to have joint pains and arthritis and these types of things of how how much of your your day to day process is not using rotation, not using like different articulations that you need to be doing with your joints uh, in order for them to feel stable and and able and and active. And so the, these are things that we're always trying to stress uh, because if you are consciously uh, you know, trying to make sure that these moves make their way into your everyday routines, uh, you're much more likely to to keep everything going in a positive direction. Yeah, I mean, your body, uh, you know, the human body evolved to be to constantly be efficient, and so what that means is that whatever you do, your body aims at becoming better at and more efficient at. Whatever you don't do, your body has no reason to maintain because whatever your if your body needs to maintain a, a movement pattern or muscle, it costs energy. So imagine if like, you know, you have like, the, you're like the C, you're a CEO of a company and you're constantly evaluating the company. And you're like, you know what? There's no market demand for this department right here. Why are we maintaining this department? It's costing resources. Let's move this department over here where we need more resources. So you lose it. Your body is constantly doing this. It's, it's pruning. constantly pruning and focusing and adapting. So absolutely what you what you don't use, you lose. What you don't practice, you lose. And what you do practice, you get better at and more efficient at. And so it's a constant, you're always gonna be reminding your body to do this. There's never, I remember talking to people about exercise and you know, one of the objections, which I always thought was strange, people would, would have would be, you know, I'd say, hey, yeah, well, what if I build a bunch of muscle and stop working out? Then what happens? I'm like, well, it goes away. Like, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> and they, that was their objection. Well, I'm not going to even start then if it's going to go away. It's like, well, well, that's dumb. Yeah, everything works that way. There's nothing in the human body that doesn't work that way. So, absolutely continue to practice. Here, you know, like I rarely practice jumping and bounding. And more recently, I found that I'm starting to lose that skill. It doesn't feel as comfortable to me. And I remember, like, oh, yeah, I need to start practicing this if I want to maintain this particular skill. So look, Mind Pump is recorded on audio and video. You can actually watch the show on YouTube at Mind Pump Podcast on YouTube. You can also read a lot of our free guides. So if you want more information on building your body or burning body fat, go to mindpumpfree.com. And finally, if you want to find us on social media, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.